His hero was the late, great Groucho Marx, but he wasn't just a fan. For years, he worked for the legendary funny man. Now Steve Stolier, Groucho's personal secretary, has written the inside story of the last years of this Hollywood immortal's life. Nanette Barusha has the story and some rare film footage. Can you do this one? <laughs> Comedy and eyebrows. Come on in. A combination that adds up to Groucho Marx. He was a Hollywood film legend who died in 1977, but not without leaving a lot of laughs and a few good memories for Steve Stolyer. Who do you like in comedy today, aside from me? <laughs> the mechanism that made Julius Henry Marx Groucho Marx uh, remained intact to the end of his life. In 1974, at the age of 19, Steve Stolyer came to work for an 84-year-old Groucho Marx. They met during a campaign to re-release the Marx Brothers film, Animal Crackers. Once the film was, was uh, reissued, uh, I was rewarded with uh, the job as his personal secretary and archivist. It was the ultimate dream come true job for me. A huge fan of Groucho, Stolyer caught on film some of Groucho's final days, now seen here for the first time. And he's detailed his three years with the famous comedian in a book appropriately called Raised Eyebrows. And the eyebrows that were in the movies were made out of grease paint, as was the one, his mustache. A lot of people don't realize that. But Stolyer's title also yeah, refers to the eyebrow-raising events that he witnessed while sharing life with Groucho in his Beverly Hills mansion. Was it a real Hollywood style of life in that house? Uh, it certainly was for me, but I never took it for granted. And there was always something interesting happening, whether something interesting positive like a birthday party for him with lots of celebrities or something interesting negative like Aaron Fleming flipping out and uh, throwing a book across the, across the room or something like that. Stolyer is referring to Aaron Leslie Fleming, the woman who came into Groucho's life during his later years and made headlines doing it. There's nothing wrong with me. You may have a few problems. In the early 80s, it was called the trial of the century. After Groucho's death, representatives of Marx's estate sued Fleming, accusing her of using her influence to cheat him out of property, money, and valuables. A jury decided in favor of the estate, and for many, it just proved that Aaron Leslie Fleming was downright crazy. Mr. Bryn Schulman is an assassin and he murdered Groucho Marx. Stolyer details Fleming's strange behavior at home in his book. She was devoted to him, but she had mental problems. I, I saw her call him a stupid, senile old son of a bitch because he couldn't remember anything funny that happened during the shooting of A Night at the Opera. There's a In this footage of Groucho and Fleming shot by Steve, they can be seen in happier times. Was she also his mistress? I don't think so. No. Groucho himself said he was long past being able to do anything, and you might as well just read a good book. You recently celebrated your 84th birthday. Yes. Uh, and you, you've seen a lot, you've accomplished a great deal. Do you have any sort of philosophy for the young today? Yeah, I wish I was young. <laughs> <laughs> Groucho Marx's final days were plagued with debilitating strokes, yet his house was still a meeting place for some of Hollywood's most famous. For a 19-year-old, it was like living a dream, with an 87-year-old who continued to perform what Stolyer calls Groucho-isms to his final day. A couple of days before he died, a nurse came in, and he woke up and said, what do you want? She said, I want to see if you have a temperature. And he said, don't be silly. Everybody has a temperature. And then fell back to sleep. In the foothills of Tennessee. Now, one other bit of interesting trivia from Steve's book. He found out that there was a sixth Marx brother, th brother that apparently no one ever knew about. That brother died at the age of three before Groucho was ever born. Still ahead, Matt LeBlanc as the Italian Stallion, the star of Friends in a movie that you've never seen.